Hey everybody, Will here from Downtime Activities with another running the game advice kind of video. This is something that I think a lot of, especially new DMs, kind of struggle with, and more experienced DMs kind of do naturally without really putting any thought into it. But it's something that is very integral to running a successful and fun game for a group of players. And that is making your tabletop RPG world feel alive. These really aren't rules, they're just kind of three simple checkboxes that even if you only nail the first one is going to add a lot to your games and these are going to be valid for really any tabletop RPG no matter the rule set. So let's go ahead and get into it. There are essentially three simple ways to make your RPG worlds feel more alive for the players. These are consequences, variety, and detail. All three of these are going to contribute significantly to making the world feel more alive, but to different degrees. The most important of these, and the one that's going to contribute the most, is implementing consequences into your world, both good and bad. Quite simply what this means is that the world is evolving in response to the actions of your players. This can happen both immediately and in the long term, both on the small scale and on a large scale, and for both good or bad. Obviously, if the players break the law in public, there should be a response here. But what I'm talking about here goes deeper than that. It's quite easy in between sessions to take a few minutes and think about how the player's actions are going to affect the world at large. If they've sided with one faction or another, how does that affect the world? If they've caused a massive disturbance in a village, how does that affect the village in the future? If they return some months from now, how will they be treated? What will have changed? This is where notes are your best friend. It will always pay off in the end to take notes of how the characters are viewed by NPCs, or particular enemies someone might have made. This makes it much easier to decide how the world is evolving around the characters, and what consequences their actions are going to have. To be clear, just because consequences is the term that I've chosen to use here, that doesn't mean that it has to be bad. There can easily be good consequences to the actions they've chosen to take, and unless the characters are real scum, there should be at least some positive outcomes. Players love to have their actions remembered and referenced, and it's the easiest way to make it feel like they're playing in a living world that is responding to their moves and decisions. A likable NPC showing up trying to find the mysterious killers of their father, when the party is pretty damn sure that they're the ones responsible, prompts interesting character decisions and shows them that the world that they're in is a little more complex than they thought. If the players end up with a fortress during the game, or as lords of a section of countryside, this is an excellent vessel to make their decisions have consequences. Show the efforts of their madcap policies on their land, or have NPCs who hold them in high regard for past actions show up to find them, or enemies show up to avenge past wrongs. Even small encounters many sessions after the events they're referencing, or NPCs showing back up having been changed by exposure to the players, are going to have massive impacts on how vibrant and alive the world feels for your players. Less important, but still an easy way to make the world feel more alive, is adding some variety. This can and should be a part of everything, from world building to encounters or quests. The real world is an incredibly varied place, where many different types of stories are happening, and your RPG world should be the same way. Not every encounter should be a dungeon delve, and not every enemy should use the same stat block. Make an effort to have your kingdoms and nations have cultural differences, different beliefs, and different styles and aesthetics. Make your taverns a little different from one another. Make shops carry different goods. And make your NPCs have different personalities and opinions, even if you don't do different voices for them. Make some quests less straightforward than others. Splash in the occasional goofy encounter, NPC, or quest, especially if the rest of the campaign is super serious, or on the other side of the same coin. Splash in some locations, NPCs, or quest objectives that take themselves way too seriously. Let the players explore freezing mountainsides, arid deserts, humid swamps, deep forests, or tropical coastlines all within the same campaign, as long as it makes sense for them to do so. Vary your descriptions of the towns they visit or the NPCs they interact with, and have those NPCs respond differently to the player's actions. Any variety that is added makes the world feel like a more complex and living place, and things that are outside of what they expect, or outside of what they've seen and experienced so far, are going to reinforce that complexity. The other big part of this variety is varying the actions and movements of the NPCs of the world. 
Players don't want to feel like the NPCs are just standing around in the same spot all day waiting to talk to the players so they can give out a quest or reward. Having to track down NPCs to talk to them because the NPCs are busy people wandering around doing things will make the players feel like they're interacting with real people, not cardboard cutouts. And this is an excellent way to introduce little bits of intrigue, character traits and flaws, or backstory elements. Lastly, and arguably least important, though still a valuable and easy way to make your RPG world feel more alive, is detail. This doesn't mean that everything your players interact with has to be minutely detailed, but splashing in little details here and there in your descriptions or interactions makes the world feel like it has some depth. Details about how NPCs carry themselves, or odd little foibles some have, are going to make the world instantly more immersive, while detailed descriptions of some important objects or places are going to help the players feel like they're actually there themselves. Scattering small details through the world helps your players gravitate towards things that deserve their attention, and helps keep their attention off of things that aren't as detailed. Any details you add help the objects or people they're attached to feel like they have their own stories that were in motion long before the players got involved and that the NPCs weren't just standing there waiting for the players to come along so they could give them the next quest. Detail is the spice on top of the dish. Video games are a good example of this. There are plenty of games with poor or archaic graphics that are powerfully immersive or still hauntingly beautiful in their own way. While there are also plenty of games out there that might burn down your graphics card if you try and run them even on mid-range settings, but their stories, worlds, or gameplay aren't worth the pretty wrapping. Details help your world feel alive and lived in, but only if they're building off of a solid foundation. Which is why, despite being an easy way to increase how alive your RPG world feels, they're ultimately far less important than consequences and variety. These three things are the easiest and most effective way to make your RPG worlds feel more alive for the players. These three things don't even require all that much planning or prep. All of them can be done with only a few minutes of work and the exact scale at which you implement all three of these will ultimately be up to you. I do want to stress that the more time you put into each of these, the more they'll pay off, but I understand that not everybody has that amount of time to devote. Even with only minimal work, however, these are all going to add depth and complexity to the world, and make the players feel like they're existing in a world that responds realistically to their pushes and pulls. Well, I hope that helped uh, some of you, especially new DMs out there, um, just kind of get some ideas and get the ball rolling on just adding a little bit more depth to your RPG worlds. And really, it's one of those things like take a lot of pressure off of yourself, especially if you're uh, running a game for a new play group. They're not necessarily expecting all that much. So anything you do to kind of add a little bit more depth and life to your world is going to pay off in dividends. If you like this type of stuff, we have a lot of other videos with both more statistical, kind of number crunchy, uh, running the game type stuff, as well as more videos like this that are just kind of discussions of general concepts. In particular, if you like this format, uh, you might like the Bonus Action Podcast, where Matt Erickson and myself and occasionally a guest sit down to discuss concepts like this without getting into the sort of statistical uh, elements of the game. If you guys enjoyed this video, please consider throwing a comment down below or giving the video a like. As a tiny channel, that really does help us out a lot and we always like seeing that kind of stuff. Now, go forth, slay dragons, sling spells, roll dice, and enjoy your downtime activities.